Good morning. It's Pentecost Sunday, and for some reason this year in church, putting out the flaming illustrations and plugging in the fan to make a big wind, it just didn't seem to cut it for me. I've spent the past week reflecting on someone else's sermon. It was Steve Penny's at St James, 11 o'clock, and the seriousness with which he challenged everybody there to take our faith seriously and just do it in a way that would help people see that we are Christians. And I've been reflecting too on the difficulty we all have owning that this is God's message to us while at the same time not wanting to come over as judgmental or condemning in what we say because being challenging without appearing to berate people for not being good enough is a pretty difficult balance. Some of us are sensitive to anything that might feel like criticism and we're in danger of feeling guilty or depressed whenever we're challenged for any reason at all to reflect on our lifestyle, whether our lifestyle seriously needs changing or whether it's one that others might even consider pious or innocent. Others of us are pretty thick-skinned and we simply don't like anything we do being called into question, especially by people we would not take for role models for ourselves. So how does one speak God's word of comfort without damaging the flock? Now I said God's words of comfort comfort deliberately there because the word comfort is associated with the Holy Spirit and today is about the giving of the Holy Spirit. The Latin com means with and fort means strength. God's word of strength, God's word of discipline, being firm with us his children, not God's word of fluffy feelings and reassurance that all is fine when it isn't. Well, on Pentecost Sunday, we begin to get the answer. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what kind of challenge each one of us needs and exactly how graphic to be or not to be because of God's love for us as individual children. I had four children, and though I did my very best to treat them all equally, I quickly learned that equal doesn't mean the same. My love for one might mean I needed to be firm with them if they had any chance of learning a good habit, whilst my love for another might mean all I needed to do was lift a burden of guilt off them in order for them to see their fault and run to correct it. God is like that with us. God's discipline is meeting out to us loving chastisement according to our needs in each case. And the way to tap into this is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit which activates our true identities and empowers us to be ourselves in Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, we are like becalmed ships. Becalmed ships are unable to manoeuvre. They're unable to enjoy their own power. Even under attack, they can't move out of the way. They may look okay. They may even feel okay, but there's no wind. So although they are well equipped for movement, we might as well be on land, very differently constructed. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we are moving ships. And God's loving challenge works in us. God's challenge blows the cobwebs away and opens our minds to the correction which is appropriate for us.
God makes a very big song and dance about the first time the spirit is given by means of roaring of wind and fire. And what Jesus said about living water, drinking the living water of the spirit becomes a reality inside us. Now, I remember the first day that I was conscious of being filled with the Spirit. I'd never heard the gift of tongues before, so I did not speak in tongues that day. But I did sense a new power in me. It was a power to do God's work, God's way. Instead of very familiar feelings like, I can't do it, I'm not good enough. I wouldn't even be able to speak about my faith to somebody else. I don't even know what I think. I found that my I can't had become an I can because Christ is in me. And I did because something had happened. I had realised that I was able to tap into and live by a different power than my own. And that realisation may have left me a few times in my life. And yet even in my darkest hours, I have known God was there inviting me to switch my prayer lines on and be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Not because of my own merit, but because of Jesus giving me to drink the living water of life. And that's what it is for you today, this Pentecost Sunday. Reach out to God for help and for a refilling of God's holy life within you. Rekindle your passion for God, your longing for God to come first and to be first in your life, and you will most surely feel again that life-giving Holy Spirit which descended on the motley crew of followers of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. And then you and I will be empowered again to live truly for Christ, to follow him and only him, to just do it as Steve and Jesus Christ would say.